thank you so much, everybody, for being here. So let's first get into, oh, gosh, I got some stuff to show you guys. Like, no kidding. Uh, but I don't want to spend too much time showing stuff. I want to get into the phone calls because I honestly want to hear what you guys have to say. So remember the video I put out a couple weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, the guy who claims to be a family member of law enforcement. You guys know what I'm talking about? Well, he's getting a little bit more strange by the day. And when I say strange, I mean, I'm not sure whether to think he's just some guy that wants attention or is he a family member of law enforcement or is he connected to Brian Koberger? And I'm going to show you guys right now what I'm talking about. Probably about a week ago, maybe a, 10 days possibly ago, he started posting on TikTok again. And his TikTok uh, video was rather strange because he was commenting on Brian having his Vans shoes. Okay, so I don't know if anybody's seen that. I think once people realized he's not, in fact, Brian, they sort of dropped him. But I've kept my eye on him because he's super, super weird. And not to be rude about it, but I think you guys know what I mean. It's it's hard to make. It's I don't know what to make of this guy. I really don't. So let me show you his recent posts. We'll start there, and then we'll get into other stuff. All right. Okay, let me make sure everybody can see this. All right, let's explore his, the video I'm talking about with the shoes. Let's see, wait, did I? I don't know that I posted. Let's, you know what, let's start here and then we'll get into the shoes, ready? Interesting details in this case. For example, to have committed the acts that they are saying Koberger committed, wouldn't he have been covered in blood, right? So why wasn't there a trail of blood leading, going through the house and out the door and into a car? Hasn't it occurred to anyone that maybe Kohlberger is a criminal mastermind? Maybe this was all planned. Um, what if, just think about this, what if Brian Kohlberger was simply the person's ride. What if he took the person to the home, dropped them off, and then left and was seen speeding away in the white car? He's acting very cocky about not having done it. Maybe he didn't. Maybe he was in on it. Maybe there's a person no one has identified that actually committed the crimes. Um, the important thing is that these four beautiful souls have to get justice at the end. Um, just think about these things. The pieces may come together. Okay, so that was his first video after the last one that I posted of his two weeks ago, maybe. Remember where he gets real infuriated and he says, I'm innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. You know what I'm talking about? If you don't, you can always watch my video. Uh, well, I don't remember what I titled it, but it was about two weeks ago if you look there. So what we're hearing from this guy is he keeps, obviously keeps showing up. We don't know why. By the way, just so you know his name uh, on TikTok, it's Josco1972. He is the one that like about a month ago came out and was giving all this weird you know, information which, by the way, after I read the affidavit, there were some details he gave like about Xana. Well, I don't know that he said it was Xana, but the way he described it is like what sounds like happened to Xana specifically. So I honestly don't know if he's just making this up. I don't know if he's if he really is law enforcement's like family member. And honestly, I don't know if he's related in some way to Koberger or a friend of Koberger. I just know that what he's saying is really strange and you'll see what i mean here in a minute let me share the next video okay now we get into the shoes hopefully there's no music that plays i don't think there is better give me those shoes than mine give them back to me 
I ain't giving them cues back to nobody. You better give them back to me, Leroy. I'm keeping them shoes. <laughs> you bring them back. I believe you did it. I was fooling him before, but now I believe you kill him. You kill a little boy with his shoes. You've got them hid. But you better give me those shoes. They're mine. Give them. Okay. So that's weird, uh, in my opinion, because he's making a note to talk about the shoes, right? We now know from the affidavit that the perpetrator was supposedly or allegedly wearing van shoes that had like a check. Was it a check pattern? I think it, I think that's what they, I think that's how they referred to it. But anyway, let's go into the next shoe video because it gets weirder. All right, next shoe video. So all you hear is his breathing. And then he zeroes in on these van shoes right here. Again, you know, could be nothing. Could be him just trying to insert himself like so many do. It's just weird. Next shoe video. Or wait, maybe the next one is not a shoe video, but here's another one of his, okay? Here we go. Go ahead and say whatever you want. There was an accomplice and the police know that there was an accomplice that is still at large. Go ahead and say whatever you want. There was an accomplice. Because he needed one of the residents to unlock the door. Duh. Because he needed one of the residents to unlock the door. Duh. The tarp will be much easier to find than the knife. The tarp will be much easier to find than the knife. He's, he's different, right? I don't know what to make of him. I know that the videos in the past caused me to really wonder, okay, who is this guy? Maybe he is law enforcement's, uh, you know, a family member of law enforcement. But the more and more he's talking in these videos, I'm going, maybe he knows Koberger. I don't know. Or he's a clout chaser. Good point, Sam Sam. Yeah, he totally could be a clout chaser. So let's listen now to a clip. I know a lot of people don't like to listen to clips of Nancy Grace, but there's a clip where she's talking about the shoes. And I'm just going to kind of, um, I don't know, illustrate his, you know, his clips about the shoes with her clip about the shoes. So hold on a second. Let me grab that. I've been studying the shoe print a lot. And of course, we need to know more about it before I can be 100% sure. But it seems to me that the shoe print corroborates or confirms what DM, the one of the two roommates that lived, stated. We believe it is a van sneaker shoe print because of the uh, diamond print on the bottom of it. Now, Koberger was seen entering and leaving court one day in a pair of vans. I don't see how those could be the same ones, but don't you know, they tore his apartment up looking for those sneakers uh, because you know there'd be blood on them if he kept them. But um, I'm just thinking about what we can learn. We don't know if the shoe print was bloody, in fact, but I don't really see how it could be anything else but blood for them to have noticed it well there's a couple things the footprint is near the home the critical thing is it's in the home it is in the home but the direction that it's heading <clears throat> and that's what verifies what she said the direction he was going same thing so now you have a shoe that he obviously liked that type of shoe it wasn't an air jordan wasn't a work boot it wasn't a flip-flop so if he's got more than one pair of those type of shoes but if I'm the crime scene investigator and I cannot find a bloody pair of vans, I'm going to take every one to show again this pattern. This is a shoe that he likes. 
I've also at that same got the size. So now I've got, <clears throat> excuse me, the same size shoe you wear. The direction of the shoe heading out of the house, which is what DM said. And I've got a pair that should be bloody. You're giving me a horrible flashback of the O.J. Simpson trial and the Bruno Mollies. I just want to get that out of my head. Okay, so, you know, I wonder if it's true that he left no trail of blood, how did he do that? Did he shower? Did he wear one of those Tyvek suits? Uh, did he take everything off, put it in a bag, and then get rid of the bag? Like, how did he keep himself from getting blood all over the place. Of course, we're not positive that he didn't, but from what it seems like, and from what Nancy Grace said, it's really a mystery as to why there wasn't more blood on the exterior of the home from his exit. So, you know, I think that's one of those things that has yet to come out, maybe. It really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I feel, I personally feel, and it's not confirmed at all, but I personally feel he had to have ha had help in some way, shape, or form. It's really hard to pull this kind of a, a, we're talking quadruple homicide. How do you pull that off alone when not every single person was asleep, right? We know that Xana was still on her phone. Was it till, let's see, she got a DoorDash. Was it DoorDash? Yeah, I think it was DoorDash delivery. Then she's on TikTok. Was it till 412? It was either 412 or 416. And then by 425, or for I need to have the timeline in front of me. But by 420, I think it was, or 425, he's out of the home. How did he do it so quick? It's anybody's question. Like, it doesn't compute. All right, so now let's get into the connection between Koberger and Kaylee and Maddie. I'll show you what we've got going on here. So you might know this, you might not. Koberger was big into working out. He was a runner, supposedly. Um, he would listen to Spotify. So here was his Spotify account. He had 324 followers and was following four. Now, I want you to see who he was following. Kaylee Gonsalves. Let me make sure you guys are seeing this. Okay, good. Kaylee Gonsalves, Maddie Mogan, Nirvana, and Jack Harlow. Those were the people he was following. Now, what I noticed in the first like moments after he was arrested, after they took him into custody, it seemed like there was literally somebody that was taking down all his social media. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? If you were tracking that moment when like they released his name and you start looking him up, right? You're Googling Brian Coburg. You're finding him on Reddit. You're finding him on, um, uh, hold on. What was the other site I was finding him on? Oh, on Instagram, everything. It seemed like everything, every bit of him that was known, any social media he had, it was gone like within, I can't really put a time on it, but it felt like it was definitely within the first day. So now check out his, um, and you know, we're lucky to even have screenshots. These have been taken down. Like his Instagram photo or his Instagram account was taken down, but look here. Okay. So this was definitely his account. How I know. Well, okay. I can't say definitely, but I'm pretty positive. It was his account because on October 8th, he posted a very gruesome video of somebody beating somebody else to oblivion. Okay. I don't think you can retroactively go back and post stuff now. Can you? I think it was his account. I could show you the video, but honestly, you don't want to see it. Anyway, here it was. Brian Christopher Koberger was, I believe, one of the Instagram accounts he had. Look who he's following. Kaylee Gonsalves, Maddie Mogan, this guy Casey, Ryan. These are like, I think, military guys. Um, let's see. What was the... Yeah, the video, I could show you the beginning of the video. Oh, I'll, I'll pull out of it pretty quick, though, because it's honestly pretty unsavory. Okay, so this is what he posted. This is somebody who reposted it because they were yanking his account down. But his original post was October 8th. 
There's no refuting that he posted this October 8th. I'm going to pull out of it right now as it gets bad. All right. You get the drift. Yes. Thank you, Bubbly Waters. Faceless. Uh-huh. All right. So he obviously was toying around with the possibility of, in my opinion, doing something on a grand scale. And honestly, I wonder if it wasn't like Dahmer. Remember the Jeffrey Dahmer series came out early October? I can, re I can recall completely when I was watching that one day, I was thinking in some ways I felt that series glamorized what Dahmer did. Like in the last couple episodes, it shows like how he's sitting in his cell and all of a sudden he's, he, he doesn't know it, but suddenly he realizes, like he doesn't know before this, but he realizes suddenly from all the fan mail that he is famous and he is like going to live in infamy forever. He starts getting like envelopes, you know, um, from people all over the world. He's getting fan mail. He's getting money in his cards and stuff. And he's like, wow, like I hit the big time. Look at what I did to get noticed. And I can distinctly remember watching that thinking, Oh no, I hope this doesn't inspire somebody to do the same thing. So I don't know if it really was, you know, Dahmer that may have caused him to fantasize more about doing this, but he obviously was troubled for a really long time. Going back to 2011, if you guys read those posts, those, uh, what was it? Something snow, visual snow posts about his depersonalization and his ability to, or his inability to connect with other people. I feel like he obviously knew he was a broken person. There's no doubt about it, but it's how he proceeded after that with obviously studying criminology. He became a master in his field. Um, it was a huge fascination to him. It's, it's what made him tick. So it's like, is that what caused him to like want to go carry this out. He wanted to see what it's really like to complete something like this. You know, I'm using, yeah, capitulated to his desire. Exactly. Mm hmm. Yeah. Now, looking back, I, I know, okay, first of all, I knew this was going to happen, that there were going to start being people just because it always happens. It happened with Brian Laundry, but people that would come out and be like, no, 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 he's innocent. In my opinion, there's a lot of there's a lot of evidence right now, just from what we've seen in the arrest affidavit, that it was likely Koberger. You look at the mental problems from back in the day, from 10, 11 years ago. Then you compound the fact that he had been to their house 12 times or in that specific area. He leaves his phone actually tracks him towards that direction in that time frame when the murders were completed. You then see the car. The car is you know, on surveillance, circling three times, and then a fourth. He gets out, or well, we haven't seen that part, but at 4.04, makes his entry, we believe, into the home, um, then leaves a sheath with the DNA. Like To me, that's pretty solid. But if that's all that they have, I'm maybe a little worried because they do still need more than that. But I think that's a lot. Guys, I think that's a lot to say. This was probably the guy. But remembering back to Gabby Petito and Brian Laundry, they did the same thing. Um, if Naomi's still in here, she'll remember. There was whole like Reddit groups devoted to Brian Laundry's innocent. It's like we all knew who else, who else did it? Come on, you know. Now, in the case of uh these, you know, college students, Kaylee, Maddie, Zana, Ethan. I think they're, you know, they could have potentially outshined a lot of people. They were very well known from how it sounds. They were academic achievers. And there was probably a number of people who could have been jealous of that. But I still believe it was Brian's probably jealousy, his envy. Oh, here's, you know, here's Ethan. He gets the chicks or whatever he's thinking. Oh, here's, here's, um, Maddie and Kaylee and they they could get any guy and they're whores or whatever he was thinking, right? You know, he's justifying it in his mind. And I truly believe that when that 
desire took root in his heart. He could, he probably obsessed about it until he carried it out. I truly feel that. I still think maybe he had help. And I will think that until we absolutely hear otherwise. But I totally believe he was one of, he was the main person. That's my opinion. You can absolutely disagree with me. Um, you're entitled to have your own opinion. It's fine. Now let's talk about his hand real quick, okay? I want to tell you, when I look at that hand, though it is kind of a grainy picture, it's you can still tell there's a there it's definitely swollen it reminds me honestly of oh gosh 15 20 years ago my husband had gotten in a a fight this is like right when he was done with high school he got in a really bad fight he was defending himself and he had a horribly broken hand like it was swollen, it was painful. It kept him from joining the military for another nine months. It was so bad. But that's exactly what my husband's hand looked like when it was broken right there. So I don't know what he did. I believe obviously it's the hand that he used to carry this out. I don't know the extent of his injuries, but it absolutely looks swollen to me. And I know this is probably old news you know it's the topic of conversation two or three weeks ago but i wanted to address that hand real quick because it is absolutely noticeable all right next stuff okay so i don't know how to fit this in but let's talk about it real quick i've gone over this before this was the riddle left on fortune oh fortune i know it's coming okay but I really still wonder if this has relevance. Let's read it again and let's look at these coordinates, okay? Flowers, leaves, and butterflies. Here is a sight to soothe your eyes. A mini forest outside your home. You might even find a gnome. So he gives these, whoever the author of this is, gives coordinates, right? Well, my husband, part of his career in the military was maps. He's great at maps. So not that it takes somebody being great at maps to find this, but this is, where it leads to. It's a location. So let's see, e, uh, east of it, of this dropped pin location is Pinecrest Road. North is Robinson Park Road. And it's just in this field. I don't know that that's relevant, but I will tell you, it's about 26 minutes from where he lived in Pullman. So it was kind of like a good not a midpoint, but it's like a location you could go to and you could probably get back in a little over an hour. I don't know that that means anything. I just wanted to share it with you in case it is important. Um, I know there's probably snow everywhere. It's not like anybody could find anything right now, but there was another set of coordinates that I found and they give a location in, starts with a V. I think it's Viola and how it was posted in 4chan. It was a while ago. It's maybe three or four no, not even. No, 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 no. Actually, it was quite a while longer. It was like seven or eight weeks ago. These other coordinates were posted in 4chan and they said, here's more coordinates. And it was a location in Viola. I think that was the name of it. And it was also equal proximity. It was like 26, 27 minutes to get there from Pullman. Now, where it is, I couldn't find it, but I, I know I have it. I just need to look a little bit better. I can show that to you. Um, if you send me an email and you want to see it, I'll send it to you. How about that? I'll find it. Anyway, I felt that was worthy of discussing. Now, another thing, and then we're going to start getting into the phone calls because I don't want to spend too much time on this. Let's listen to the Reddit post again. This is the Reddit post that I had my first live stream of the, on this case. Okay. So I, I included it in this, in my first live stream on this case. You will hear it again. And now that we know more of the facts about this case, I want you to tell me if you really think it's possible Brian was the author of this, okay? Let's go ahead and play it. So it says, here's what I think happened. They all came home around the same time, home by 2 a.m. The killer is already there in the wood line, hiding in the dark, but with a full view of the back of the house the entire time. Watches and waits as they all eat and congregate briefly in the second level kitchen area in varying states of inebriation. Finally, 
They go to their respective bedrooms, Ethan and Zan on the second level, um, locking the bedroom door behind them. Maddie and Kaylee do the same on the third level, initially to their own rooms to get ready for bed. The killer is outside motionless, still waiting patiently, noting what lights are turning on and off and tracking the faint sound of opening and closing bathroom and bedroom doors. His intended target is in there on the top floor and all lights are out now. He waits 20 more minutes, silence, yet he is concerned about the unexpected male in the house, but he is too hopped up on all of this, this fantasy, months in the making, to turn back time. Plus, he has a target, a mission to accomplish, a retribution. He hopes he can accomplish his task without having to even bother with the couple on the second floor. He is stealthy. He has practice. He slips in quietly, a window, a door, it doesn't matter. He is in, undetected and quietly ascending the staircase to the third floor now. He reaches the intended target's door. It is slightly ajar. In the dim glow of charging electronics, he notices there are two girls in bed. He freezes for a moment, stops and listens to the deafening sound, silence and realizes it is far too late to turn back now. He pushes in silently and sees his target. She is sleeping hard now, and so is her bedmate. So this person knew that they were in the same bed before it was ever announced by the parents, by the way, or by the dad last night. Of course, a lot of us could assume that that was the case. I know I did, but this is kind of interesting, okay? Uh, he hovers over the target and unleashes his carnage, a barrage quickly incapacitating her. The girl lying next to her is awake now, but only for long enough to say no several times the last one being loud enough to further enrage the killer. She too is quickly dispatched. He had practiced this a thousand times in his mind. It was quick, the whole thing. Um, he checked his watch. It had only been three minutes in total since he entered the home. Um, let's see, hold on. The bedrooms, a total of five minutes since he slipped inside the house. The killers quick, quickly look around and and pauses to listen. No sounds downstairs, but his heart is pounding so loudly in his ears, he doesn't hear the hushed voices and quiet shuffling coming from the second floor bedroom. As he begins his descent down the stairs to make his quick and silent exit, his sick mission now accomplished. A wave of exhaustion rolls over him as he steps off the stairs onto the floor of the second level. He sees his exit across the room. He begins to move towards it slightly. And then it says, to be continued, maybe. Isn't that wild? Every time I hear that, I think, especially now that we know a little bit more of the time he was actually in the home, it could have been about eight minutes, which is exactly what the guy says. Well, the, the author of that post says. So I really wonder now, was that written by him? Was that another little, you know, cryptic thing he put out there not so cryptic though right i mean he's he's pretty much giving a play-by-play -play of what happened i know it sounds like a crime writer but it was very specific to these details and that kaylee would have woken up and then he had to take his anger out you know i don't know it's every time i hear that it just takes me up back and just a a a certain way. I don't know. It's hard to explain, but it's very, very sad what happened to these victims. Their lives were cut so short, just savagely, just snuffed out. It's awful. All right. So the last thing I'll show you until we get to the phone calls is in the very, very, very like first hours one two hours maybe it was when brian we found out brian that you know was arrested and stuff and i started searching like so many of you did and we found whatever we could little breadcrumbs of his online of his you know online footprint i came across by searching um bk what was it bk 781 because that was part of his email address for school and I'm pretty positive this was, these were his posts. Like, I'm super duper pretty positive. I won't say 100%, but I'll say I'm pretty positive. 
I wonder, I still wonder if perhaps there is an OnlyFans connection in this. And I don't, I don't say that in a super serious way, but I just kind of have pondered the thought because Brian was clearly into the OnlyFans girls. Let, I don't know why it's not pulling up. Just a second. Let me get in. I'll read these posts to you. All right. EK. Here it is. Okay. All right, so I, who I believe to be Brian. This was BK5781 on Reddit. He is talking about an OnlyFans girl. He says, complete scam. She's a liar and ripoff. It's the biggest scam going. She lies in descriptions and you see nothing. So in other words, if you don't know much about OnlyFans, I'll tell you, you can pay to see these, whoever you want to see who's on, who is on OnlyFans. You can actually see pay them to see more of them if you catch my drift he seems to have been very interested in the only fans girls you'll find out here um she would make a fortune on only fans she's beautiful and her only fans is fantastic he's talking about um where is it i won't say her name no for her anonymity i won't say her name Okay, anyway, it amazes me how Derek thinks he's way more in control of the game than he actually is. What in a GD something? He's delusional thinking he got Aza to final three. So he's talking about some OnlyFans check. Then it says, no, not worth the monthly fee. She's, she's a gorgeous woman, but a very tame OnlyFans account. So in other words, if she doesn't show it all, she ain't worth the money. That's trippy. Okay. And then, let's see, commented. Jessica something, who appeared with her dad, Bob something, has been... I can't read that. Okay. That's not true. He's married to Jessica, whatever, totally different person. Then he talks about his looks. He says, I'm a solid five. So, you know, the grading system of attractiveness. Um, I have the subscription. I was lucky enough to subscribe before she changed it to 50 bucks. She doesn't post much and it's basically topless pics. I've seen worse, but it's worth the 50. All right. Um, definitely. then he's remarking about some woman's upper parts, you know, basically I think he was on OnlyFans. I think he was watching girls on there. This is my opinion. Doesn't mean I'm right. I think he was scoping girls out on OnlyFans. If it's true that Maddie really did have an OnlyFans that she did use, I wonder if he actually found her on there and then started scoping out Kaylee and Maddie. That's just a thought because he obviously moved from Washington for something. He claims it was because of shopping. That Remember he said that. It's like so cockamamie. But anyway, uh, I still wonder what brought him from Pennsylvania to Washington, right? Anyway, we'll leave that there. Let's get into the phone calls. Oh, you know what? Let me tell. Let's see. I think. Tom, and thank you so much for your super chat. If they made all cases like this, the, like this, the death penalty, I think it would slow down and stop so many incidents from happening, especially when against kids. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I, I agree. It's the worst. It's so awful. What I wanted to say was I was kind of uh, thinking along with what your last caller talked about. But I yeah. thought I was too far thinking outside the box. But if you think about it, you know how Brian put out that thing like, how would you do this or how would you do that in that paper thing he was doing? You're talking about what the questionnaire? Way of trying to find the killer. 
Right. Yeah. He could have solicited help. Right. Yep. I, I know what you're saying. So you're saying from the questionnaire, he could have solicited help yes. from that alone. I, I agree with you. He could have. Yeah. Right. Because with a questionnaire like that, you are finding like minds, people who have committed crimes. Exactly. Mm hmm. I absolutely agree with you. I think it's possible. So, I think it's very yeah, possible. I, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I was going to say, I think it's very possible. Yeah. Right. Me too. So yeah, I had to give a thumbs up to that last caller because yeah. I thought that for a while, but like I said, I would thought I was maybe thinking too far outside the box, you know? Right. So, no, I think but, anything's yeah, possible. I'm, I'm kind of curious to see what the connection is. I'm real curious. Me too. Well, right now I can honestly say, I, yes. Can you hear me? Uh, okay. Yep. Okay. So, I, I can honestly say, I think Instagram and he was following on Spotify uh, however else he was following them, obviously stalking them too. But I would like to know how did he originally come across Maddie and Kaylee? Right. Yeah. That's the million dollar question. So yeah, uh, I, I think guess if you answer that one, I think if all the tips will fall into place after that. I think so too. And I'm sure the FBI and stuff is getting to the bottom of that right now. They've probably figured it out. You know. Truly, they uh, have. Yeah, I hope so. Right. But what what do you think about the, the, it's been going around that maybe he did have uh, an accomplice? Do you think that's a possibility? Honestly, I think it's totally possible. But, you yeah, know, I'm if I say that, too. if I say that, people will be like, I'm unsubscribing because she thinks somebody else could be involved. It's ridiculous. We're allowed to have our own opinions, guys. Right. You know, that, that's what I don't understand why people are upset about that. Yeah, they get very upset, very unhinged about me thinking that there could be help. And, you know, maybe there was no help, but it right now it seems like this would have been a tall order it, it, to pull off yeah. by yourself. Yes, it happened too, too quickly, especially if yeah. they were all awake. How what is that's how I'm starting to take it. Mm -hmm. They tried to say they were asleep, but from what I'm hearing, it sounds like they were almost all awake. There's no way one dude went in there and did that in that amount of time. Oh, I know. Uh, we're talking now. So from 404, it seems he's likely in the home, I guess. He's probably right. tippy toeing around. Zana's still awake, still she's eating her DoorDash or well, she got her DoorDash delivery. She's on TikTok till is it 412 or 416? I'm confused. But anyway, he was in there for such a limited amount of time to pull this off. Four people right. in like 15. Here's another question I haven't heard nobody talk about. Yeah. Now, were both the rooms, like, did he have them rooms picked out beforehand? Because if he went upstairs first and come downstairs, he goes past DM's room before he gets to Ethan and them's room. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So why didn't he go into DM's room if it was closer? I know. That's the million-dollar question. We're all right. waiting to find. And people yeah. that, you know, just speculating that, I mean, that's what went through my mind. Why did he pass her room if it was closer? But if you speculate that, then people's like, no, don't go oh, to DM. Look, she's been through this and this and this. It's like, I know. Them are the questions you have to ask. Even though they might be hard, them right. are the ones you have to ask. Right. You have to mark them off the list. Yeah, it's, a, it's an uncomfortable question to ask. But it's, it, I, yeah. it's worthy of knowing. I'm very curious and I, I will be forever. Oh, me too. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Um, so. I try to not talk about that because people get really infuriated if you go yes, there. I, I, I read the comments all the time. That's why I had to call in. I've never called in before uh, and I just had to do that, you know, but yeah, I read the comments and yeah, I yeah. see, I see exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Well, I, so don't feel bad for you. it. I think you're doing a great job. So keep oh, thank doing you. It. Thank you so much. What's your name, by the way? I'm Mark from Indiana. Okay, Mark yeah. from Indiana. Are you in like Indianapolis or? No. Okay. No. I, I just had two quick questions. Yep. And I'm hoping chat can help me. Okay. What are your Do questions? You recall... What was that? I had two questions hoping chat okay can help me. yep go ahead so the one question was do you remember the gentleman that was a 
uh, a retired uh, detective. Yes. And he visited the area with his wife. Yes. Are you talking about McDonough? Chris McDonough? Yeah, he went there on an off day and visited and found the glove. Yes. By the garbage pail. Yep. Do you know, have we heard anything since? No. In regards to evidence? Nope. Haven't heard anything and we probably won't hear anything. My guess is until maybe the prelim or if there's sufficient evidence and whatever, then the trial, we probably won't hear anything till then. Cause I don't think they would About confirm. Yeah. I don't think they would confirm whether that was, you know, Coburgers or somebody else's right now. Cause that's part of the case, yeah. you know, that's part of the case. Yeah, because it's been like it's shut down. Like I haven't heard anyone talk about it. Yeah, and the uh, the other question is, um, I don't know if you follow T Red, but it was a gentleman that called in, and he sent in um, video of a footprint on the back of the deck. Does anyone in chat recall that? Oh, it was a footprint. Okay. Does, on the back of the deck, on the top deck there, in other words, right on the other side of the rail. And I'm wondering, it's been quiet since that, too. Okay. So, I don't know. Does anybody in the audience, do you guys know what she's talking about? You said there, there was a footprint on the back deck. Is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. Facing the back of the house as if. They put one foot down on, it was one shoe print. And then, and the guy sent the video in and we everybody did a close up, but it's just like the glove. It went quiet after that. Oh, so I don't okay. Know. okay. Let me see if anybody, no, people are saying no, they haven't heard that. Don't recall this. Doesn't sound like they uh, know. Yeah, it was on, it was on T Red. The guy called okay. in and he showed the video of it uh, it was at the beginning of all this okay we were figuring before Kohlberg's uh, arrest oh it was before his arrest okay yeah um, yeah yeah okay well i don't know there i'm not seeing anybody say anything about okay. it nope and, they didn't and hear also in just in my opinion after hearing um junk turkey's video yeah um I think it's definitely more than two. I'm thinking Kohlberger and two other accomplices. That's, yeah. in my opinion, right. because of how, how fast in and out. And, uh, you know, he right. might have found some sick fuckers around with him on this. So. Oh, I know. My thought. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to surprise me if it's more than two. Also, you know, like, but you would think, so you would yeah, think we, if it is more than two, that the info yeah, would have gotten we, out, we right? Believe. We're not, they're not, those, they're, I'm from Jersey. I'm not out there. Okay. But which leads me to believe they're not still safe. They're not safe out there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I so, know what you mean. In due time, this will all come out hopefully you know, he'll sing like a bird and add more, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh, I know. But thank you for your time. Thank I you. I appreciate it. Thank you. I sure appreciate you calling. Take care. Have a great rest you of your day. I, I, you're doing a great job. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Take care. You too, honey. Okay. Bye. Bye. Okay, now I need to call back the lovely lady. Thank you if she's listening. Thank you for your patience. I'm calling you right now. Okay. Hello. Hi. Thank you for your patience. Hi, Lauren. Hey, how are you? I'm great. Uh, you and your husband are such a lovely couple. Oh, thank you. And uh, I love it when you do lives. I'm I'm always listening for you and Donna. Ah, oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, um, I was just going to mention, you know, um, about uh, 
his professor, Ramsland? Yes. I really think that, um, and of course, you know, only my opinion, yeah. that it's possible that he really does want notoriety uh, so badly in a Jewish way or whatever, because he hopes that this Professor Ramsland is going to end up writing a book about him, like she's oh, written about other killers. Good point. You know, what do you think? <laughs> that's an interesting point you make. I could see that totally. He seems to have, he seemed, of course, he seems to have an obsession about a lot of things, but I think he also had an obsession with that professor. And oh, for sure. uh, I, I definitely think notoriety is his goal, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And that's one of the reasons he wants this to be drug out uh, as long as possible. Right. I believe he savors every moment. And uh, it would be nice if Donna could maybe get from spirit whether, you know, she could get inside his mind enough to see more yeah. about, you know, what his uh, motive was, what the outcome was, you know, that sort of thing. Well, you know... When she did her very first read on the situation, she felt that it was too, and this is not going to sound good, but this is, this is what, when she was channeling his mind, this is what she felt it was. He wanted to blank her while he's uh, doing something else to her. If you can yes. fill in the blanks. I remember that. Yeah, yes, I remember if you can that. fill in the blanks. Really horrible to imagine. But I think uh -huh. that that was part of it, too. So not only to, you know, live in infamy, right, to be famous from what he's yes. done, but he also had a very, I think, specific goal in mind. And that was to carry this out and get what he wanted from her through. I totally agree. Yes. Yeah. Through R.A., you know, fill in the blanks. We'll, yes. Yeah. We'll spell it out there. Um, and it's so sick to imagine. Right. Because if you put yourself in these victims shoes how frightening it must have been exactly gosh yeah it, it's and it's him, a horror movie him enjoying every minute of it right yeah <laughs> yeah it's an absolute Terrible. horror movie do you think he killed before this well i still wonder if he wasn't uh doing some of the animal killing just to mm -hmm. uh, practice or whatever that was going on there. But I have also wondered about yeah. the uh, elderly lady, um, whichever it was, Washington or, or, or Oregon, and also the couple and the uh, yeah. where the um, female survived. I have wondered about those two. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I really I would, wonder. I would I... love to know more about how much traveling he did over in this area prior to starting school there. I would love to know exactly why he picked that college to go to. Why would Me he go too. all the way across cross country or university to go to? Why would he pick that one? Right. So. Right. That was such a distance from where his family and his friends and everything he knew to be true. Right. He chooses right. a place completely across country. What was the reason? Did he go to be closer to Kaylee, Maddie, and that's exactly it won't surprise yes. me if he did honestly yeah i would love to know more about his prior traveling me too <laughs> if, he, if he was traveling around washington oregon area i think this guy was capable of anything oh so no gosh. i don't i don't necessarily believe this might have been his first killing but we'll just have to see how it plays out you know and i've i've said this before but when i was tracking the whole 4chan thing like a month ago the there were such horrible, we're talking heinous, disgusting sort of posts in there of, you know, deceased people, uh, animal abuse, you name it. I've talked about it before, but it seems ever since he got locked up there, mm -hmm. it's been so muted in there. There it's absolutely a, a, not even a fraction of how sick it was. We're talking just, it was very, there were twisted posts twisted people nasty visuals you know photos and stuff and now it's really quite yeah, innocent I, I don't know if that's law enforcement you know um, could be trying to control that could but be it could i think a lot of that was him i, I absolutely think, think so too i think he was in there yeah i think that will be on his computer when they check it out when you know in court yes. and stuff when they reveal what have, they know. I have every faith in law enforcement. Mm -hmm. I mean, their uh, PCA was uh, was just as um, 
mind blowing as it could have been. So yeah. I think they've got a lot more in, in store for the trial, but I, I believe that Brian is going to be enjoying every minute of it. Oh, he's loving it. He's loving this attention. He's finally somebody, right? Yes. Yes. And I still think, I still kind of wonder on the number that he killed. I just wonder if four wasn't his intention. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, you know, and he had four and that was another reason he got on out of there. I still wonder if, if it wasn't the four that yeah. had been his in, in, intention all along. Right. What, what is your view on, um, why DM and BF survived, but the others didn't, do you have any particular, uh, feeling or opinion about that? No, I'm very curious yeah. to hear when it comes out in trial about how all of that played out. But I still think it could have just been DM. Uh, maybe she had was high on something or whatever. And, you know, these kids, when they go to sleep at night, they'll sleep half the day the next day yeah. and stuff like that. And so I still think it's possible that for whatever reason, she closed her door, locked it and and yeah. passed out, went yeah. to sleep, and it was literally, you know, the next day, close to noon, before she woke up and started realizing what had happened. I still think that that's a possibility. I, I, I don't see how she would have been involved in anything. Right. So, so when she gets up on these, I think it's three occasions, opens the door. Well, first she hears, I think, um, what is it, uh, Kaylee. She Well, she thinks she hears Kaylee playing with uh -huh. her dog. Then she opens up the door again. And I think, is that when she hears Xana crying? I'm trying to I remember. Think. I need this thing, this document in front of me. Yeah. There and then several different. Right. Yeah, and then the, open. and then the third time is when she sees, Bri well, she sees who she believes is Brian, a guy with bushy eyebrows. And then he's got his black clad, you know, dressed. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. the mask just across his mouth showing so that you could still see his eyebrows. I see for me personally, and it's hard for me to even put myself in her position because that is so scary. She must have been freaked. But like I if I saw that, I just feel that I'd be so like, how can I help these people? Like something that we must be under siege. We must be under attack. Like there's something scary going on. Why is this guy dressed in black and covered covering his face? You know what I mean? I think exactly. that's that's yes. what I have a hard time with. I'm just going, how was she not? trying to get on the phone and at least call somebody. But I also understand being paralyzed and fear. So I see it both ways at the same time, if that's possible. And, and also just the number of kids that they had in and out of the house. Yeah. And, you know, just that her mind was probably nowhere on the fact that something horrible might be happening in the other rooms. Yeah. You know, I still think that is a possibility. You know, you're mm -hmm. young. And you just don't think about things like that actually going on in your home. True. And so I, I don't know. I, I can't I wait know. to hear, you know, the explanation in trial and stuff. Me too. I totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> well, I sure appreciate your phone call. It's nice to talk to you and call back Thank anytime. You. Thank you. You're a lovely lady. Oh, uh, you are too. Thank you so much. Have a good day. I appreciate you. You yeah. too. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. We've had good callers. All right. Okay, let's see. That won't happen, but okay. um, yeah. So I like have I have lots of thoughts, but Good. Sure. um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know where to start. I guess. Um, okay. Yeah. So I I feel like um there is an accomplice mm -hmm. and like there might like along with what you're saying there might be like multiple yeah. accomplices involved <clears throat> i also feel like there might be like multiple white elantras yeah um involved too and like that kind of maybe twisted things up with the investigation a little bit mm, and okay. there was like that that guy brent um oh brent K that was killed yep brent kopaka right um, and yeah and that seems like a little weird too and yeah um yeah so i i also okay so i think that the connection with brian and the girls might be okay so something that i was thinking possibly is maybe through video games he met like a group of people 
oh. that, you know, like playing, I know that people might be like, oh, everyone says that, you know, video games cause this. And I've never really thought that before, but I do feel like it is a way to like, um, get in touch with people and like maybe even messaging and mm -hmm. where, I don't know, police won't necessarily like pick up on it. Good point. Um, and yeah. And like, yeah. And there's also, so like with the sheet, it, that's also weird. It, okay. So I, I watched your video and it talks about the, um, or I watch, or like now I follow Gerard. Yes. Corsi yep. on Twitter mm -hmm. and he like brought up the rope theory so I started looking into that and I found like all these different connections with like a ton of different movies that just weirded me out like so much it was um you know like there so okay I think somehow he met okay I know people are gonna get angry about this and everyone's gonna be like we've already laid this to rest but I I do really feel like Jack S was involved Jack okay and uh, yeah yeah and like he um it sounds, I think he went on a date, like if you, um, with Kaylee, like, mm -hmm. I don't know if that, have you heard that at all? I have, I think, but it's, uh, so when I saw the footage of them together at the bar, it looked like she was mainly talking to Jack Decor, or I should say they, it looks like they were talking mostly to Jack Decor, but go ahead with your, what you were saying. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. You were kind of breaking up. I'm sorry. Oh, what no. did you say about that? Oh, I was saying. When I saw the footage of Jack, Kaylee, and Maddie, it looked like they were mainly hanging out together. And I'm talking Jack Decor, the former boyfriend of Kaylee's. I hope I didn't lose her. I still couldn't hear you. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm trying to, I'm going to maybe go outside. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know why this isn't working. Can you hear me okay no, now? It's okay. Can you hear me? uh a little yeah, bit yeah you're still kind of breaking up a little bit okay um but let's try this again now i can hear you okay good yeah. all right so okay jack decor oh, yeah so jack decor kaylee's former boyfriend when i saw the video yeah or sorry when i saw the footage of them together at the corner club it was jack decor Kaylee, Maddie. It looked like mainly they were hanging out together. I didn't so much see Jack Showalter, except for like kind of at a distance. So that was the extent of what I saw yeah. them like actually being together. And then it was at the grub truck. But that was it. That was all I saw anyway. What about you? What were you going to say? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just, I feel like, okay. So on the video that Olivia of Chronicles of Olivia did with the yeah. parents, uh -huh. There's like they talk about how she went on a date with someone and that he told her to make Casey a form and called her a bitch. Right. And like you can if you watch it like closely, you can see that they kind of mention like, oh, I need to call old Jack. Like to me, it made it sound like I was like, oh, like was that Jack? S, oh. You know. Okay. And you know, yeah. So that's and how so you then, interpreted and, you know, it. I also heard. This yeah, that is. Yeah. Okay. Um, and okay. if you like watch back, like just, yeah, tell me what you think or other people can kind of look at that and see what they think too. But, um, you know, and then I, I feel like with her dad talking and being like, I just hope they have the right guy and like talking about how they clear people too quickly. Like, I feel like they were maybe thinking it was Jack S for a while. And you know, there was all those crazy rumors mm -hmm. in the beginning about like, but he does come from like a pretty wealthy family mm -hmm. and it's pretty well protected, like in the government, you know, like it, things they work for the state yeah. and um you know it was like supposedly that like, he lived next door um mm. the other like thing that i thought that might have connected brian like with them is like if he was doing drugs like i know that that enon harsh guy like he he had said that he had been arrested previously for like dealing yeah um like 10 years prior and I was like, well, maybe that was like a connection that, that um, Brian had with like picking up drugs or something. And then he realized that here was this house. But like, I really do feel like it was Jack S. And like, I think like if you look at the rope stuff and you mm -hmm. see how like um, what the basis of like the plot of the movie is, they like basically are talking about this um, like woman, Janet, and she had dated like three different guys. They were basically like making it sound like she was kind of like a floozy or whatever. Okay. And like, 
they end up like murdering her one of her like boyfriend and it was like kind of in revenge and there was also some really like there's like a lot of homosexual like undertones to it okay um with like the two main characters that were working yeah that like killed the guy in the movie rope and like what they were doing they like tried to commit the perfect murder and it was like set up like it was like a masterpiece like a work of art and then they invited a bunch of people over for dinner and it was like their professor and they were trying to like show almost show off this murder as like their work of masterpiece to the professor Mm -hmm. um so i kind of was like well maybe that was like brian and jack or something and you know brian's kind of trying to do this like masterpiece for his professor and then i started looking up like other stuff because then um a lot of the rope movie is about like nihilism and it goes off of like a lot of frederick nietzsche's Mm -hmm. like beliefs and like oh staring into the abyss yeah are you talking about that you're talking about nietzsche the the whole staring into the abyss is that what yeah nietzsche yeah okay go ahead sorry yeah yeah well and he has like a lot of these different theories about like you know morality Mm -hmm. and uh, like becoming the like uh like superman Okay. And um, I don't know, like they, I think maybe he, like in Brian's mind, he was maybe trying to do kind of like an experiment. Oh, also in the rope movie, they like ask each other after the murder, like the exact same questions that Brian wrote on that Reddit post. Like, oh. how did you feel after the murder? Like, what were you thinking? Which was like also kind of creepy. And then I yeah. also like kind of got down this like like rabbit hole with um i started looking up like the dark knight and like some of Frederick Nietzsche's like concepts and philosophies and like there's like this other ancient greek philosopher like dionysus and it talks about like okay. the, like different pluralities of like good and evil and death and life and stuff and mm-hmm. i found this quote from Frederick Nietzsche hold on let me pull up my phone yeah go ahead uh, Oh, okay. hold on. People so are saying, screenshot. Uh, people in the audience are saying that they're lost. I'll kind of explain it real quick. So there's a guy on Twitter, Gerard Corsi. He said that this, uh, excuse me, the, the Brian Koberger's, the, the plot he carried out was similar to, what's the movie called again? Is it? Rope. By rope. Albert, Albert Hitchcock. Okay. Rope. So it's similar to yeah. Rope. And so she's now talking about the possible parallels she's seen from Rope to this case. That's what she's talking about, just so you guys know. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. And then, so I found this quote from Frederick Nietzsche. It's called, the gilded sheath of pity sometimes covers the dagger of envy. Okay. So I thought that was, like, pretty weird and aligned with, like, leaving the sheath behind a little bit. Oh, interesting. okay yeah and then there was like yeah and it does seem like it's almost like set up like a movie and like yeah so and i think um talking about like yeah just envy and -hmm. having this like kind of love triangle and i feel like with the two jacks involved that like jack had been on this date with kaylee and then um he rejected him and like after he they had that bad date and she was getting because she told her family about it was kind of like weirded out by him and talking about how she wanted to go back to the other jack and then you see that night that she was rejecting him i mean if you see like how much they ignored him at the bar in that picture and then also mm-hmm. at the food truck like they were definitely giving him the cold shoulder so i felt like you know that it would make sense for motive and if him and like brian are working together like to try to create like, okay murder or so you feel that it would have been like then, a few of them so brian as well as maybe the jacks or something that's your theory like that's what you think could have happened yeah okay gotcha yeah. okay just making and sure then, and then i also like started getting into like um well a bunch of alfred hitchcock movies seemed really like aligned with a lot of the stuff that they did like color angry men there was like a bunch of weird stuff and um I actually like made a video, like my first video, and it's super horrible a couple nights ago, and yeah. I, it was really bad. But I talked about some of these like themes that I found. But um, 
it like uh also like so then i found something about like from the dark night they were talking about how you could like the secret kind of like easter egg that told you i've never seen the movie but they were saying that like the thing that told you about how you could tell that it was batman was his car because like the like meaning of his car in batman was actually bat so that showed that he was batman and so i was like i wonder what the meaning of elantra is and i looked it up and apparently in spanish the meaning is like a house of whores interesting so i thought that was pretty weird too yeah that is weird well thank you so much for calling and giving us a little bit of your insight i was wondering about that that movie rope because i know gerard first of all where does Gerard get all this from is what I want to know. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure that out because he's been right on yeah, a few sure, things. I can hear you very well there, but yeah, no, no, for sure. Yeah. I don't, I don't understand. Yeah, thanks for taking my call. I appreciate it. Okay. Well, thank you so much for calling. You take care. Anyway, we'll go ahead and leave it there. Thanks so much, everybody for coming. Take care. Lots of love to you and yours. Again, thank you to my mods for, modding today and thank you for all the callers and the super chats everything i've really appreciated your time today real quick thank you so much kdub71 for your super sticker and hope everybody has a great rest of their day talk to you all later bye